Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. In front of me here today is a MacBook Air from 2020. This is the Intel model, and this is actually the cheapest 2020 MacBook Air that was for sale on eBay. This thing cost me a total of $222.41. And as far as I can tell, this is as cheap as it gets. Now we can see just how dirty this thing is. It only came with the MacBook, there was no charger. So if you don't already have a USB-C charger and power adapter, that'll run you probably an additional 30 or $35. Putting this at around 250, which is honestly even less than the 2018 MacBook Air sells for. So let me get this cleaned up, let's go through the setup and then talk about if this is a good deal or not and whether or not you should buy one of these in 2023. desktop of macOS Monterey on the 2020 MacBook Air. Let's go ahead and check about this Mac and see what specs we have. So it looks like we've got the base model, the 1.1 gigahertz dual core i3, eight gigabytes of RAM, Intel Iris Plus graphics, and I'm guessing 250 gigabytes of SSD storage. So base configuration here. Let's see how many battery cycles this thing has. 650, so I think that's actually kind of high for this machine to be three years old. I guess it got heavy use. That's almost uh, a little under one charge cycle every day. I guess that's not too bad, but someone must have used this thing pretty heavily. Let's make sure the battery health is okay. And battery health is normal. We do not get a percentage that is limited to the Apple M1 and M2 computers. So now what I want to do is I want to update this thing to macOS Sonoma right there. And then we're going to test this out and see just how good or how bad this MacBook Air is. So once this updates, we'll pick back up and I'll let you guys know what we find. All right, I updated it to macOS Sonoma, and I'm currently trying to edit this video that you're watching on here. And Final Cut Pro completely froze as it was trying to render a clip that I had sped up. The computer's completely stuck. I can't do anything. All right, I had to restart the computer, and we're back at the login screen here. But it's stuck again. Nothing I can do. So I'm going to have to restart again. All right, we're logged back in after the second restart, and I just want to show you guys, look at the temperature. The computer's not even doing anything except opening the apps it had opened before, and it's already at 100 degrees. And the fans are kicking in. Here we go, Final Cut Pro. Finally opened, and I am editing my video here, and it is so slow. Just adding that text right there, the MacBook Air text, over top of the video causes this thing to just crunch to try to get through there all right here's a disk speed test we're looking at about 600 for write and between 12 and 1300 for read so not that fast compared to apple silicon which is at least twice as quick but still not terrible here is the single core and multi-core geekbench 5 scores these are really low that multi-core score is about what you're going to get as a single core score on an M1 MacBook Air. And for an M1's multi-core, it's like four or five times as high as that multi-core score here on this i3 MacBook. And the OpenCL score is about a fourth of what you can expect from Apple Silicon, which scores around 18,000 to 20,000, which is about the same as 
an older 15 inch MacBook Pro with the Radeon Pro 460 or 560 and 560X. So performance on this thing is not good and the cooling system on here is terrible. So with benchmarks out of the way, now let's talk about actually using the computer and how good or how bad the experience is for day-to-day -day activities. So here's the thing about the 2020 MacBook Air. And specifically, this is gonna to refer to just the Intel model because the M1, the Apple Silicon version, is better than this in almost every single way. Now, if you are not worried about performance, then this MacBook is gonna be just fine for you. It's got a nice display. It's got the refined scissor switch keyboard, which feels great and is very reliable. It's got a nice big trackpad. And overall, it's a really thin and light computer. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports. And this thing runs the newest version of Mac OS, and I anticipate it'll get updates for at least a couple more years since this is running on the 10th generation Intel chip. And it was only released not more than like a couple years ago you could buy this thing. So I think it's a good laptop. If you can find it for the right price, one that's in good condition and has good battery health. I think those are the important things. And I wouldn't pay more than like for this model, for the i3, I honestly wouldn't pay more than like 350 at the most, maybe. Because you're missing out on a lot of the things that Apple Silicon offers, including incredible battery life, way better performance, and overall just a better experience. But all that said, if you can find one of these for a good price, then I think it's a great computer. It's perfect for web browsing, doing emails, writing documents, PowerPoint, Excel, even managing photo libraries. I think it's pretty good at that. Now you're gonna run into some problems if you try to edit videos with this or do any demanding tasks like playing games or trying to run boot camp on here. It's just not gonna be the experience that you're looking for. So with all that said, the amount that I paid for this is certainly a good deal and I would recommend that to anybody. The problem you're gonna find is a lot of these at that price point, they have an iCloud lock. And that's why they're so cheap. And some of the other ones are gonna have some issues like a broken display or water damage. And it's, it's not gonna be an ideal experience. Even scrolling here through the Apple website, it is kind of stuttery, it lags a little bit. And I can actually hear the fans are spinning up, or sorry, fan, it only has one. They are spinning up here as I'm scrolling up and down the website because well, this thing doesn't have a heatsink. The fan just blows air over top of the CPU. There's no, no heat, heat fins or anything. It's not a good design. Apple knew what they were doing. They really uh, limited the performance on this thing in an effort to get people to buy the MacBook Pro. So you can take a listen here. You can hear the fans going. All right, well, that is gonna conclude my short review on this MacBook Air. The only reason I'm doing this is because I got one for really cheap, so I figured why not. Overall, good computer, but don't get one of these if you need any sort of power for anything. Anyway, that's been it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're interested in seeing more of these, let me know down in the comments below. I usually do a lot of uh, iOS, iPad, iPhone stuff, but if you like the Macintosh videos, let me know, and I may consider doing some more of those. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.